But if your household is too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next under him. You go to his house. According to the number of souls, every man according to his eating. In other words, you're going to have to eat this whole lamb in this night. And what the word says in the next verse, in the fifth verse. I mean, the fifth, 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 sixth verse. Read it. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. Come on. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. This is the shadow. This lamb in the natural is the shadow of Christ. Just as Christ died. On the afternoon, in the evening, the Bible says the Sabbath was approaching. The Sabbath did not start in the morning. We count our days from the morning to the evening. But the Bible says in the beginning, when God said, let there be light, that the evening and the morning was the first day. And they counted evening to morning as their day. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They did not count morning to the evening. And when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, it was at the end of that day toward that morning. That's why we call the first meal of the day break fast. Because they broke the fast. So the evening to the morning was the day. So he's saying there in the sixth verse, he said, and you shall keep it until the fourth day, 14th day. In other words, the lamb that you choose, put it up. Don't let it roam around with everything. Don't let it eat some of everything. And many of you don't know about the chicken yard, but before we ate the chicken, we put them up. We didn't let them go around the chicken yard eating worms and grubs and bugs. We let them eat chop, little pieces of corn. Clean them out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Our part generation don't know what I'm talking about. You ask them where the chicken come from, they said a store. And a grown man come to my house one day. That boy was about 35 years old. My, my wife was showing him my garden in the back of the yard. And said, well, my husband got some uh, ice potatoes, white potatoes here. And he was, she was showing him all the big bushes. Had a big old tall bush there. And he was over there holding it up trying to see the potato. Now, see, those that laugh know why that's funny. Potatoes grow in the ground, not on top of it. I need a lamb without a blemish and a spot because Christ was sinless and without spot and without blemish. Even though they accused him and said he did many things, the Bible said that Paul said, I find no fault. See, when they examined Jesus Christ, watch this now, the high priest brought him into his home and examined them and asked them questions. Then sent him to the governor. The governor examined him and asked him questions. Sent him back to the high priest and then sent him to Paul. And as they examined him, sent him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Christ was just like the lamb in the shadow, in the, in the law. Because they would take the lamb and they would examine the lamb. They would look to see if there was a blemish. They would take and look underneath and look on top, behind the ears and check him out. That's what they did to Christ. But we saw it in the shadow. The shadow had the same detail. But only Christ was being examined from judgment hall to judgment hall. And then when the high even under the old covenant to deem that that lamb was without spot and blemish. And when Pilate, when, when Caiaphas and Annas could not find fault, they were saying Jesus is suitable to die for the people. And when Moses and Aaron would examine the lambs, look at the lambs and they would have to determine, Aaron would take that lamb and say, now he's worthy to be sacrificed for the people. Y'all help me with that. I need a little help right now. Doctor, come here for a second. Come here, Devin, come here for a second. Oh, you got the baby. That's all right. I need somebody. Come here. Judge Romaine, come here. Come here, Doctor. The high priest would take his hand. That's good. He would put his right hand on the lamb. He would put his left hand on the goat that would escape. Watch this. He would say, he would deem the lamb clean. Yeah. Deem the 
he'd have a goat on his left hand and he'd then that goat unclean. And what he would do, he would release the goat to run into the wilderness. And they call it the scapegoat. Right. Come on, say scapegoat. Right. When Jesus was standing before power, he said, I give you Barabbas, the Holy Ghost, the goat. And here is Jesus. What you want me to do with it? They said, give me Barabbas, the goat. And Jesus met Barabbas, the scapegoat. Y'all got hand on saying. So the law had already shown us through its shadow and its details what was coming, and we saw it in the new. Come on, get along the hand. Come on. So the, the shadow, the law, was a shadow of good things to come. And when the good thing came, you were able to determine it was the very substance because you knew what to look for. He would be rejected and despised of all men. But the thing was that he should also be of a virgin birth. Y'all better help me with this. No man would have anything to do with his birth. For 30 years, now watch this now, because you can't deny this. When Mary and Joseph went through that little episode, when Mary uh, uh, became pregnant, and, and Joseph and Mary hadn't gotten married, and Mary said that the Holy Ghost overshadowed me. And Joseph said, I, I saw in a dream and God spoke to me and told me not to fear taking Mary to be my wife. But see, Israel had been looking for a Messiah for 2,000 years. From, from the time that, uh, well actually from 4,000 years when it was first prophesied that the seed of the woman, but from Abraham unto this point, the Messiah was going to come through Abraham's family. Right. And so when the people found out that Mary was pregnant, the Bible said Joseph was going to put her away, divorce her, but he was going to do it secretly because he was a just man. And some of us will put all our business out in the street because when we get mad, we don't care who found out. But Joseph was a just man, and he thought another man had gotten, oh, y'all not here. He thought Pookie was called another pooch. But God spoke to him in a dream. And he received, y'all help me, Holy Ghost. He received Mary to be his wife. But the people knew the story. Because when Jesus was, help me, the Holy Ghost was about 12 years old. They said, they, they, they saw him in the temple talking to the lawyers and, and instructing the doctors of the law. And then when he was 30 years old, they said, isn't this uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Joseph's son, and Mary's son, and we know his sisters and his brothers. We, we know this is, this is just a man. This is not Messiah. They knew the story. But when the boy got the raising folks from the dead, he got the, he got the restoring willing on. People that had been blind from birth started seeing. They couldn't deny it was too much happening. It was, it was, it was lining up because the shadow had already told us what to look for. And I'm here to tell you today that when a woman gets pregnant, the baby that's inside of her does not share her blood supply. That's why Jesus was not born in sin. He didn't have a father, an earthly father. He would have been contaminated with the bloodline of mankind. But he was, he was born of a virgin and had never known a man. Y'all not hear what I'm saying, are you? See, you, you that's why it's always we know when it's mama's baby. because it looks too much like it. All of my children have the same mark. All of them. And one of them was delayed about two years. That's a true story. It wasn't that birth. It wasn't that first year. I'm not saying I was doubting that. But I 